A very good morning to all and welcome to another training session of iFluids Engineering. A topic for today's session is OIST RP238 Well Integrity. Let's meet our trainer for the day, Mr. Sarvanan K. He's a process, tech, process and technical safety consultant for iFluids Engineering. He has over 33 years of experience in the oil and gas and petrochemical industry. He has held key positions in AD NOC offshore for seven years, Kane India Limited for 15 years, and Tamil Nadu Petro Products Limited for 11 years. His key, his key areas of expertise includes offshore oil and gas processing, SIMOPS, Bowtie, Hazard, Hazard Techniques, offshore wealth integrity management system, and offshore marine operations, such as crude export through SBM and FSO. His leadership emphasized safety in planning, organizing, directing, and controlling operations. His diverse career signifies a seasoned professional with a comprehensive understanding of the industry. A warm welcome to you, sir. Uh, to post your queries and doubts, kindly click on the link mentioned in the, mentioned in the description in both YouTube and LinkedIn, and kindly make this session an interactive session. Uh, now let's take uh, now I request sir to take forward this session. So kindly take forward the session, sir. Okay, thank you, Soumya. <laughs> thank you for the introduction. Okay, uh, good morning, friends. Okay, welcome uh, to this uh, training session on well integrity. <clears throat> that is, well integrity is a very vast subject you can see. So we'll uh, try to cover uh, the minimum requirements or basic things as much as possible is a given time for us. <clears throat> okay, we'll uh, proceed with the presentation now. Well, integrity, there is as per OISD RP, that is recommended practice 238. Okay, and today's uh, topic for discussion is uh, uh, what is well integrity? And then what is well life cycle? And what are all the ba barriers? And then uh, in well integrity management, there are many categories are there. In this, uh, we'll study about uh, uh, minimum two important uh, uh, categories. That is one is uh, well casing and other one is another pressure management system through which only the maximum well integrity issues can happen. Okay, and finally, we'll uh, just uh, go through one uh, case study that has happened in uh, our uh, KG Basin, Krishna Godavari Basin near Amlapuram in India. <coughs> okay, fine. Uh, first, the requirement of this particular uh, this thing is the present OISD or P238 on well integrity was uh, taken up for formulating recommended practices and guidelines for maintaining well integrity of a well throughout its life cycle. We'll just uh, discuss about the meaning of life cycle in the next slide. Yeah, you know, this uh, basically the well integrity has to be maintained throughout its life cycle. That is the first point. And the recommended practices covers guidelines to prevent unintended cross flow between the different pressured permeable zones. I repeat, that is uh, guidelines to prevent unintended cross flow between uh, different uh, pressure permeable zones and unintended flow of hydrocarbon from feasible zones to the surface towards its life cycle. What is talking about? What is talking about the permeable zones, that is the interchanging of the pressure between the zones. And second is talking about that uh, there is a possibility of this uh, depletion of hydrocarbon through, I mean, a certain to surface in the life cycle period. That is uh, from well, well conception to the production and abandonment. Okay, there is a document based on the accumulated knowledge and experience and the various national. That is, the document is prepared with the team of members and with the experience of 
various national practices and standards. Okay, and the first slide is definition as per RP, I mean OISD RP 238. That is the instantaneous state of the well, irrespective of purpose, value, or age, which ensures the veracity and reliability of the barriers necessary to safely contain and control the flow of all fluids within or connected to the well. Okay, and on the next slide, I will explain you in detail. There is a definition given in the RPs, that is in the standard 238. The well integrity recommended practices are developed by the OISD to ensure adequate safety and operability during the life cycle of oil and gas wells and in the ENP industry in India. ENP means exploration and production industry in India. Okay, to make it simple, the definition of uh, well integrity, here I will say in this way, <coughs> well integrity is the design, installation, operation, and maintenance of the all well equipment. The equipment, they are talking about the barriers to a standard that ensures safe containment of well fluids over the entire life of the well. I repeat the statement here, the well integrity is the design, installation, operation and maintenance of all the well equipment, that is barriers. And then in the next slide, we will discuss about what are all the barriers available for the wells to a standard that ensures safe containment of well fluids over the entire life of the well. The same here also the same uh, life cycle is coming that also we'll discuss in the uh, coming slide. This uh, loss of the barriers leads to loss of well integrity. That is if the barriers are failed means then that is called that is well integrity is lost. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Okay, before uh, going to this uh, part, well, integrity part, we'll discuss something about uh, what you can say, what are all the uh, equipments or what are the uh, systems available in a well, in an oil producing well. Uh, one is uh, upper completion, one is lower completion, that we'll discuss a little uh, thing about that one. So important part in a well is we can call it as Christmas tree. Okay, a Christmas tree is an assembly of valves, spools and fittings on top of a well. Christmas tree is an assembly of valves, spools and fittings on top of a well. It controls the flow of oil or gas. Here the names of, I mean the uh, pictorial representation of this Christmas tree is given. And uh, here are the valves. I'll just explain something about the valves. Uh, first of all, which one will take it as uh, uh, gauge valve, it is not important even, and three adapter living. Next is swab ball or crown valve. That is swab ball or crown valve. That is a valve uh, which facilitates for the intervention of the wells. If you want to measure the pressure inside the vessel, if you want to do any well intervention activities, if you want to do any slip line activities, you want to do any uh, any plugging activities. All these things will be done through this swab ball or crown wall. On top of the swab ball or crown wall, we'll be installing a lubricator and a BOP. With that, we'll be doing all the activities. That is the first wall. And second in is the production wing wall. Production wing wall is a wall used to do the used used to produce the oil and gas from a wing using the choke. So up to the wing well, the program, I mean, uh, the well uh, bore pressure will be acting and then we'll be using the choke by means of choke, we'll be reducing the pressure and we'll be, uh, we'll be doing the production as per our requirement. Okay, this is the uh, second valve is production wing well. 
and next we can see the upper master valve and then the lower master valve these are all the uh, important valves in the in the christmas tree that is it is used for isolation of the well bore fluid in case of any abnormality or any problem okay and if you come to the left hand side one more valve is there kill wing valve the killing valve is used to uh, do the killing of the well in general uh, while uh, after uh, when, when the production is completed or in case of any abnormality you want to stop the production if it is not the, the downhole barriers are not working and it is failed means continuously the oil or gas will be leaking through the system at that time if you want to kill means we will be using this killing valve to inject the uh, high density liquid to control the uh, what you can say the well bore pressure to create a hydrostatic column on top of the liquid so that uh, this uh, leakage will be coming down based on the density of the mud or uh, or AB and density liquid like diesel or something like that okay first part we discussed about the Christmas tree and second part that is uh, what you can say it is underground part it is called <coughs> casings normally in a well we'll be having uh, four casings on one tubing you can say one is called conductor casing and second is called a surface casing and third is called intermediate casing and the fourth will be production casing and finally it will be tubing <laughs> through tubing only we will be doing the production and then the production casing is the next one which will which is uh, uh, which can flow up to the production zone that we will discuss about in the next slides in detail about what is the purpose of these casings and all one by one these are the four types of casings available in the casings this uh, square mark you now that is talking about the uh, packers you, you can say that is a uh, this packers or the thing which is blocking the well bore pressure into the casings so by, by means of this packers the well bore pressure will be acting only in the tubing and it will not be transferred it will be coming to the casing side so that a square uh, box is called the packers okay next part is uh, we discussing about the well life cycle okay well life cycle it starts from design okay after design we will be going for construction and then we will be going for production that is production means the weight is not possible to produce from the same well for more than some years so based on that we have to do some interventions we have to go for uh, zone changes we have to go for other requirements and all these things and then finally up to abandonment it is considered as well life cycle so design construction operation that is production and interventions and then finally abandon up to abandonment it is called a well life cycle in generally the life cycle of the well will be around 25 years there is a system what is being followed in Qatar Energy and uh, Adnak uh, group of uh, wells. Uh, that is, uh, in after 25 years, they will not be demolishing the well if the well is producing. They will be upgrading the well as per the latest uh, standards and codes. They will be introducing all the requirements based on they will be, be upgrading the well and they will continue the production. okay next we will uh, talk about the well barriers okay well barriers or envelopes which prevents fluids or gases from flowing unintentionally from formation to other formation or to surface see we have only two options for the formation one is it will uh, it will uh, <coughs> flow through the other less permeable zone and if it is not there if there is no such zone is available it will flow through the tubing during that flowing uh, in case of any failure in this uh, tubing and then 
in the Christmas revolves or in the casing hangers, you think there is a chance of uh, liberation of gas and liquid through the joints. And all. So that is a surface. Only two options available. One is flow to the uh, other zone, other one is flow to the surface. Okay, and the barriers, you know, we can consider uh, two types of barrier. One barrier is uh, uh, it is called it is permanent barrier that is you can say it is either it is called permanently closed and if it, uh, it is not possible to easily open for example bridge plug or cementing that is a uh, uh, cementing means that the entire uh, um, tubing on top of the perforation will be filled with cement or a bridge plug can be installed. The cementing means it is very difficult to uh, very difficult to remove uh, the cementing by uh, milling and all. Only thing we can go for a, a bridge plug can be removed after some uh, extensive work. So if at all you want to reopen the zone. So this is a permanent barriers. And other barriers is a temporary barriers or is called wire length plugs. That is in the tubing, you will be having the uh, what you can see this uh, <laughs> provision to provide a plug through wire line. So, through wire line, I uh, will be going into the tubing at, uh, at, at certain depths. This uh, provisions will be available. In the process, will be installed the plug, thereby isolating the flow from one zone to the other zone. Okay, next is uh, about uh, normally open but it closed. That these are all the Christmas tree valves, or you can say BOP or something like that. BOP means blow out preventers. Okay, in Christmas tree, as we discussed, we have many valves, which is uh, all useful for isolating the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, source of liquid from the well bore in case of any abnormality. Okay, and uh, the typical physical well barriers in the wells are one is uh, we can call it as casing, and then from the, in the casing bottom we will be doing some cementing works so that it the cement can avoid the uh, that uh, what you can say communication between the well bore to the casings. Okay, that is casing and cementing. Next is uh, well head and Christmas tree. That whatever uh, the Christmas tree walls are available, no? that we can call it as a barrier. And then well intervention pressure control equipments like wireline pressure control equipment and coil to be pressure control equipment. That is wireline pins while you want to do any wireline after that is inserting a plug or removing a plug or opening a zone or closing a zone. All these things are wireline. During that time, that equipment is having a facility to control the pressure in case of abnormal pressure is coming. So that is a wireline pressure control. In the same way, coil tubing. Coil tubing is a flexible kind of uh, uh, tubing which can, uh, I mean, uh, uh, which can pass through the tubing to the desired uh, level. From there, yeah, either the nitrogen, if you want to do the nitrogen activity or if you want to do the acid activity, those things can be injected through the coil tubing equipment. <laughs> either it is to uh, clean the perforation or it is to uh, uplift some of the, uh, I mean, what you can say, blockages or something like that. So this coil tubing is useful for this kind of activities. And then well control equipment uh, such as <coughs> BOPs. Okay, there is blowout preventers. And then imposed hydrostatic column. That is, is nothing but if, uh, uh, for example, assume that the well bore is at uh, 300 meters height, and then on top of it, uh, if you have the hydrostatic column, for example, if it is water, means uh, density is one. If it is uh, salt and water, means it is density more than one. Uh, it is one point or also meter. So if you calculate the total weight acting on the well bore, it will be for approximately for 10 meters, one kg pressure will be acting. So if it is 3000 meters, means around 300 bar pressure will be acting on the well bore. This is the imposed hydrostatic column. <laughs> through that only if all the barriers are failed, through this type of uh, hydrostatic column only, there is the liberation of well bore. Uh, I mean, uh, liquids or gases can be controlled. Okay, next is about the valves. 
and finally it is cementing and mechanical plugs <coughs> just now we have discussed about the plugs and all okay <coughs> it is a graphical representation of the um, primary barriers and the secondary barriers first one we'll talk about the tubing hanger okay where the tubing casing and all the all the things are assembled together that is called tubing hanger and this is called as a primary barrier and then the tubing is a primary barrier and the packer here it is mentioned that the square box no that is packer is a primary barrier and then the casing and casing cementings are called the <coughs> primary barriers and if you go to secondary barrier uh, the <coughs> top wall that is swab wall or crown wall that is called as a secondary barrier and then uh, the upper master valve the lower master valve and this annulus valves generally we'll be having valves to bleed the pressure from the annulus these annulus valves and casings all these things are secondary barriers Barriers. That is, if your own barrier fails, then all the activities in the well shall be directed towards restoring the barrier. And the failure modes of well barrier. One is a surface failure, that is Christmas tree failure, handless wall failure, <coughs> tubing failure, and casing hanger seals. All these are surface failure. And subsurface failures are uh, completion string failure and casing below the ground level and cementing behind the casing. All these are subsurface failures. Uh, sometimes the failure may be a com combination of both, uh, that is, surface and subsurface failure. Okay, fine. Now, another uh, one important uh, barrier we missed out in the previous slides is down hole works. It is called as triple SC or SC SSC in different names in different countries. Okay, here it is called as uh, uh, down hole safety valve or other it is called triple SV means sub surface safety valve and it is uh, otherwise it is called as SC SS uh, triple SV that is surface control sub surface safety valve. Or it is uh, in the it is having come two types. One is a TR triple SV, one is a PR triple SV. That is TR triple SV means is uh, tubing retrieval triple SV. That is uh, uh, the full form of TR SSV. Okay, the sub uh, this subsurface barrier is to prevent the uncontrolled hydrocarbon flow in the event of catastrophic failure of well led or Christmas tree. Assume that there is some problem in, uh, in the Christmas tree, where, or, or you can say about we can either in the ring well or in the choke well or somewhere else, where we are not able to approach the well led nearby. So, it, so in that case, we can uh, close this triple SV using the remote well control panel, or it is from the control rooms where we are sitting. If you uh, if you activate the ESD, this particular triple uh, SV will be closed. Generally, the, the location of triple SV will be approximately 100 to 150 meters below the Christmas tree. So, uh, this, uh, if you close, this is hydraulically operated. Well. So, this hydraulically operated, it is operating at a pressure of around 2000 meters, 3000 psi pressure required to control or operate this valve. Okay. So we initiate the ESD from control room. This particular wall will be closing, thereby um, addressing the issue and uh, the uncontrolled flow from the wing valve or the choke wall is completely stopped, thereby avoiding uh, major accidents. Okay, and then uh, in this uh, 
triple uh, three part uh, we have as per the our APA or B standard that is APA or B fourteen B we have we should uh, do the critical function test you can say that critical function test should be uh, one six that is based on the individual operators in India it is generally one six six months. <laughs> In this uh, general method is uh, uh, they'll be doing this uh, passing rate from the walls. In case of liquid, maximum 400, 400 cc per minute passing is allowed. This is acceptable criteria. In case of gases, it is uh, 15 SCF per minute or 15 meter cube per hour. It is acceptable criteria. Above that limit, this, uh, we can call it as that triple SV is not functional. It is not intact. It is failed in the critical function test. Okay, uh, the well integrated management system contains uh, many uh, topics. So, to which uh, okay, we'll go to the definition. The well, uh, well integrated management defines the commitments, the requirements and the responsibilities of an organization to manage the risk of a loss of well containment over the well life cycle. Okay, this the well it management includes reservoir characteristics, well constructions, design of casings, drilling fluids, cementations, wellets, drilling operation practices, logging operations, production that is in that uh, we have a uh, handler pressure during production uh, phase and work over operations for surface and platform wells and finally it is this well abandonment all these things has to be covered in uh, well integrity management we will take up only two which is uh, more related to our production uh, uh, platform that is casings and handler pressure during production phase and we will discuss about these things now Okay, first we are going to discuss about the casings. As we mentioned uh, previously, casings is a large diameter pipe that is assembled and inserted into a recently drilled section of a bore hole and typically held into place with cement. As, as mentioned in the drawing, it is uh, first the bore hole will be drilled as per the size of the casing. Uh, in initially it will be kind of casing that will be for a uh, normal it will be for 30 inches and the design uh, based on the soil condition the design will tell you at up to what depth, depth this conductor casing has to go and then finally it will be held support with the casing shoe that is there in a, uh, under the each con conductor one black color uh, triangle is there that is called the casing shoe. Okay, and the casings, it is an international practice that casings are uh, four types. One is conductor casing, then surface casing, then intermediate casing, and production casing. Finally, and it is production tubing, through which only we will be doing the production. First set below the structural casing. The conductor isolate the unconsolidated formations and water sands and protects against the shallow gas. This is a first casing. Normally it will be around 30 inches and it will be going up to some uh, if uh, the well height is uh, 3000 meters, approximately this casing will go to 300 meters. That is the general top roll, we can say. So this is basically to avoid the shallow gas. Okay, and the next is surface casing. Surface casing is said to provide blowout protection, isolate water sands, and prevent loss circulation. It also often provides adequate shoe strength to drill into high pressure transition zones. Okay. I think that uh, the definition is clearly telling what is the requirement. Next is intermediate casings. The intermediate casings is said to isolate unstable hole sections, 
loss circulation zones okay it is often sit in the transition zone from normal to abnormal pressure the casing cement top must isolate the hydrocarbon zones okay, this is what we are discussing about previously about the more permeable zone where the liquid and gas can be i mean easily pass through because of high permeability okay finally it is about the production casings production casing is used to isolate production zones and contain formation pressures in the event of tubing leak in general this production casing will go up to this uh, what you can say well bore or the production zone this casing can either be run to the production zone or is set above the production zone it may also be exposed to injection pressures and fracture jobs okay fine okay next general instructions about this casing and all casings are combined with a good cement bond provide a strong and long lasting barrier to flow of formation fluid through annulus okay well must incorporate sufficient intermediate casings so designed and constructed to prevent uncontrolled flow of formation fluid at surface subsea or underground and to prevent undesired release of formation fluid it is talking about the uh, length of the casings required for uh, uh, each casing that is for each casing up to what level the casing has to penetrate it is talking about this particular statement and casing should be inspected and tested as per api or p5 ct and this api or p5 ct is talking about uh, what you can say the material required for the, this uh, casings and then the testing procedures or methods to be done for this casings casing should be designed to withstand the worst anticipated conditions of bust collapse tensile and triaxial loading during keeping in view of intended purpose of just go above just go up missed it we okay, will uh, we'll take it as casing should be designed to withstand the worst anticipated conditions of burst collapse and tensile strengths okay okay casing part is completed next we will uh, go to the annular pressure management okay uh, first we will go to the definition of this uh, what is the annular pressure or casing pressure okay the annulus and casing are both the same here we will call it as same or both are uh, same terminology the annulus of an oil well or water well is any void between any piping tubing or casing okay and the piping and tubing or casing immediately surrounding it so in a completed well there are normally at least two annulus the type the a annulus is a space between the production tubing and the smallest casing string and the b annulus you can put in the different casings normally this uh, the first a annulus is called the primary casing in other words so that is uh, the uh, casing between the uh, void space between the production tubing and production casing and then the second annulus will be the primary casing to secondary casing that is called b annulus and primary i mean uh, secondary casing to intermediate casing and the other casing should be again named as annulus c and other things in the way increase that is the uh, query now so now uh, what is the types of annular pressure we are experiencing that we will discuss now one is uh, thermally induced annular pressure okay this pressure that arises due to the 
expansion of a finite amount of fluid in a finite annular volume based on the temperature variations of the production fluid. During the production process, as uh, uh, the water cut increases in the production fluid, the temperature also will be gradually increasing. If the temperature increases in the production tubing, in turn it will increase the temperature in the annulus, in the immediate annulus, thereby the expansion will be there. That, that will lead to increasing pressure. So this is called thermally induced annular pressure. And next is I can call it trapped annular pressure. Where the casing design makes it impossible to bleed the trapped pressure. Usually in subsea wells, this pressure is to the trapped annular pressure. That is, already it is stated that it is impossible to bleed this pressure. So we have to live with that pressure. And the third one is sustained casing pressure. When a, when a pressure in an annulus is higher than MEWOP, that is a maximum allowable working or operating pressure. That is maximum allowable working or operating pressure and returns to or close to its original value after bleed out. This is termed as sustained casing pressure. That is, if the pressure is increasing in the casing, we are doing the bleeding up, but immediately it is reaching back to the original value. That means there is some problem in the packers, some pressure is exerting from the well bore to the casing. So the pressure is maintained, it is sustained in the casing. It is not possible to bleed up. This is called sustained casing pressure, SCP. Okay, next we'll discuss about the sources for this annulus pressure. One is applied pressure, next is thermal induced pressure, that is due to thermal expansion or due to the dissolved gas evolution, evolution from the annulus fluid. And the next one is a ballooning from adjacent annuli. There is this, this ballooning effect. Normally, it should not affect the casings, but in case of any packer failure or a problem, there will be some ballooning effect will be there that will try to equalize or it will try to increase the pressure in the adjacent annually. And sustained annular pressure, one is a barrier failure, second is poor design, and the last one is unforeseen source of pressure. Okay, next is uh, sustained annular pressure, the reasons, the causes for this set of sustained annular pressure, that is SCP, just now we discussed, one is uh, tubular leaks, okay, leak from the tubings that will be increasing the pressure under them, then hanger seals, tubing hanger seal failure, and then that is uh, there on the top, and the loss of cement integrity, the cementing will be there in the bottom, that is cement failure, and then loss of formation integrity, and then loss of packer and seal integrity, the packer, what piece of the square, uh, square type of material in the drawing, and the leaking of control line, and uh, subsea crossover valves leaking, there will be some uh, subsea crossover valves to divert the flow either to tubing or to casings. So that was problem and then shallow pressure source. Okay, next is uh, finally how we are going to define the operating envelope for this sustained annulus pressure. Okay. ISO defines a maximum allowable annular surface pressure, MAASP, maximum allowable annular surface pressure as the lowest of the calculated strength cases. Okay, then in the coming uh, uh, sentences, again the meaning is again explained. The operator decides the maximum operating pressure, MOP, as percentage of MAASP. Okay, ISO gives the guidelines that MOP uh, should not exceed 80% of MAASP. 
But anyhow, this RP APA RP 90 does not recognize MAASP. Instead, it is talking about the maximum allowable operating pressure. Okay, the APA or P90 defense and the pressure. I mean, <coughs> MAWP that maximum allowable working and operating pressure as 50% of the MIYP of the casing. That is, uh, MIYP means. Uh, Minimum yield pressure, right? What is it? Internal yield pressure. Minimum internal yield pressure of the casing. And 80% of uh, the MOF next outer casing. This is for uh, uh, primary casing and the next outer casing. And 75% of the MCP, that is minimum collapse pressure of the inner tubular pipe body. For this MIYP and all, we have the chart, the MIYP map, directly it is talking about uh, the material of construction. So, the, what is the maximum it can be exposed that we can evaluate from the charts. So, 50% MIYP for uh, uh, the casings that can be calculated based on the chart. And finally, What is the final will okay? I will skip it. That last one is not clearly visible. <coughs> okay, fine. Next is about the acceptable level. Okay, wells with lesser than 100 PSAG and the pressure should be modularly. If uh, the pressure inside the casing is below 100 PSI, I think to worry it is allowable, it is allowed, so we can just monitor only. If uh, the unless pressures are more than 100 PSI and less than maximum allowable working or operating pressure, it can be blood to zero and monitor it for 24 hours. If it is not reaching, there's a, a MEA WOP within 24 hours, we can take it as a acceptable uh, limit. There is more than 100 PSI, but lesser than MEA WOP. Okay, next is when with wells with annular pressure, MEA WOP, or where the pressure can't be blade off, must be dealt with the case by case. And this is the thing just, we have, just now we have discussed, that is uh, for this case, uh, it is not possible to fix the value means. Or you can say in uh, different countries, it is, it is to be handled by the operator, you can say. In different countries, different methodologies for being followed. For example, uh, in, uh, in uh, Adna group of uh, wells, uh, 2500 PSI for the primary casing is the limit. And 500 PSI for the secondary casing is the limit. If the pressure is increasing above this 2500 PSI, that well is uh, ranked as high risk tracking well and immediately the production will be stopped from this well and then well will be temporarily I mean, uh, abandoned. Uh, and they will try to do the repair work. That is, they will identify from where the leak is coming and do the arresting work. If it is not possible, they will abandon the well with the plug at the bottom most uh, provision available for plugging. Yeah, in the same way, the final issue is how do the rug wells is left to the operator? It is not perceived in APA, RP90 or the other standards. Each country will have its own jurisdiction on how records must be reported. And here we see of assembly and then proper storage, corrective solution. Functional testing, pressure testing, life cycle maintenance and verification, relying only on pressure testing can be dangerous. That they are giving one more, uh, what you can say, precaution. Relying only on pressure testing is dangerous. So these are all the threats to well integrity. Okay, material degradation and loss of functionality. 
uh, in case I will visit as we mentioned in this uh, uh, photo, you can see that casing is punctured and uh, that, that some liquid is coming out from there. Okay, corrosion, that is uh, the reason for corrosion is either it is sweet or sore, oxygen and non-availability of cathodic production and external casing, corrosions, erosions, casing wear and sand production from the well, fatigue and fatigue and tubing and casing stress and uh, pressure thermal and tectonic scale formation and then hydrates formation these are all the reasons for material degradation and loss of functionality okay another ways to maintain the validity is one is organizational competency and next is develop proactive rather than reactive well integrity management so designing for the life cycle embedding well integrity in the equipment design solid well construction practices and well life cycle management and management commitment okay with that uh, we have completed the presentation part and uh, we'll be doing this uh, final part that is case study okay in the case study we are going to discuss about a yeah, subsea blowout in kg offshore kg means krishna godavari offshore which is uh, which is in uh, near amlapuram or you can say it is near rajamundari in india it is a ogc well okay in india only one subsea blowout has occurred till date in one of the well G19. It is located 15 kilometers from Amlapura. <coughs> that is coast in KG offshore basin in Deir Bengal at the water depth of 252 meters. Okay, that is happened in August 2012. Okay, initially the story short like this. On, on 8th of August 2012. An ONGC drill ship reported continuous foam forming that is 1.5 nm, that is nautical miles south from our anchor location. Okay, nearby OSV, that is operation support vessel in the field. Also reported gas hole coming from the from under the sea, creating a big bu bubble fume. So helicopter and then immediately the helicopter survey was carried out and the area of uh, this uh, water and gas is 500 meters approximately. Okay, and then uh, the government decided to locate the uh, first thing we have to locate the exact location of leak for that they have hired one uh, ROV that is a remote operated vehicle vessel that is that is hired from my reliance and uh, survey was carried out. This vessel also could not be inside 500 meter radius of center because of the gas bubbles and uh, there is a possibility of fire or explosion. So that is also then cancelled. And then rig is deployed. The, for the rig condition, it will not be having any engines. It will be pulled by some of the support vessels. So the rig was, uh, rig was uh, rig, uh, requested to go near and then the ROV was applied and then they found they found the G19 well is blowing gas from the bailed hub of subsea customer stream. This is blowing gas from the bailed hub of the subsea customer stream. We'll see that uh, thing in the photograph now. The same there is uh, next, uh, next to that other equipment is the ROV, which is uh, taking the photograph of this particular uh, leakage scenario. Okay, uh, before going to the uh, remedial action and what they have done, we'll just try to understand what the history about the well. Okay, the well was built in the year 1999. 
the target depth of 2517 meter and production testing was also carried out okay and subsequently the well was temporarily abandoned due to it is non expendable well non expendable means it is not uh, what you can say it is not a profitable uh, amount of gas coming is not up to the limit and uh, the processing cost will be very higher than the production cost so they decided to abandon the well okay during november 2010 rick energy driller was deployed to carry out low smc completion um, and uh, subsequently rick sarber bush will carry out the upper completion jobs that is lower completion means the what all the things required to do the um, uh, things in the tubings what you can say that uh, the provision for the plugs or any other things all these things are lower completion and then upper completion will be the christmas tree part okay during the upper completion job in the last week of december 2011 a cyclonic storm in the east godavari resulted in well complication and the well was temporarily abandoned on 17th of march 2012 okay in this temporarily abandoned means they are telling that for abandonment what are the procedures are there that is followed for abandonment they are, uh, for this particular they have to install a plug and uh, as per the uh, design that they have installed the plug and then they left the location saying that it is abandoned okay now we will come back to the mechanism how they are how they are going to arrange the leak now <laughs> this uh, uh, leaking from the uh, subsea christmas tree and uh, now uh, we have to arrange the leak to cap the blowing well a capping stack was designed indigenously using in house available equipment by ongc steam that is uh, that cap is uh, 6.8 meters height and 4 meters wide structure by 35 tons was assembled at the company owned msv that is it is a vessel okay samudra serak having a robust 100 ton crane it is having 100 ton kits it is possible to place that particular cap on the leaking portion so that is selected the capping stack was assembled using 13 inch double ram bop that is a uh, blow out preventer interconnecting h4 connector at the bottom and h4 mandrel on top by various change of spool hub clamps these connectors and mandrels are for uh, positioning the cap exactly on the third portion of the christmas tree on top where the gas is blowing okay next is the outer frame was designed as a guide for subsea tree guide post and allowing the smooth landing of h4 connector on mantle of subsea tree hydraulic piston cylinders were part of frame for soft landing okay and then the capping stack was shifted by crane on winches of uh, two dp offshore uh, supply vessels dp means a dynamic positioning where uh, we can have uh, what you can see the movement because of the waves and sea current will be less with the dp boats this exact positioning is possible with the dp boats and compared to the normal boats okay to work class rov the remote operated vehicle we are used to position the capping stack on the blowing well Okay, simops and capping execution was done using two ROV vessels and five DP vessels, including capping stack carrier vessel. Lowering operation was done during favorable sea condition. Here, the weather condition is very very important. In case of any movement in the boat, it is not possible to position the cap exactly on top of the uh, pipe where it is blowing. Okay, and the pictorial representation is given below how it is installed. Okay, here it is. Uh, they are uh, bringing out this uh, um, what is a cap. Okay, and then they are using dynamic positioning board. Okay, next slide.
Yeah, yeah, it is. It is now. It is uh, moving. Okay, okay, sir. Fine, fine. Okay. Uh, and this is a way how they deploy this particular uh, cap in the leaking location. Okay. After that, uh, this particular uh, cap was uh, taken care by the other uh, DP vessel after exact positioning. Okay. Fine. Next, it is exactly positioned on top of the leaking cushion and then capped. Okay, and final conclusion is the probable cause of the blowout was the failure of a 9 5 by 8 inch retrieval bridge plug used for temporary abandonment of the well, which was installed before well abandonment. Okay, they have asked for the procedure, they have installed the uh, plug, I mean, retrievable bridge plugs in, uh, into the uh, tubing or casing or okay, 9 5 mm it should, it should be a casing okay, they have installed the bridge flux but that is failed and it is not holding so gas has started passing through that one and it started blowing resulting in creation of a what you can say it is a gas blow by from the sea Okay, that's all uh, from from my end. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for sharing your time and taking this valuable session. And I hope uh, the session will be very much useful for all the participants who have attended. So we'll move forward to the question and answer session, sir. Okay, fine, uh, fine. Uh, which material would you suggest uh, for the construction in that case? Somebody has mentioned some case, I think. You are asking for the material of construction. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. The material of construction for the cap or for the tubing, which one you are asking? It's whatever it may be, everything it is carbon steel for uh, this uh, valent casing and then for this uh, APA RP 5 CT one standard. Is it the standard is explaining the details about that and what is the material to be selected and what is the testing process? Everything is there in the APA RP 5 CT, correct? Right? Yeah, that is a standard. Okay, sir. He is just asked which material would you suggest for the construction in that case? Yeah, it is normally it will be carbon steel. Yeah. Okay, sir. Um, and somebody's mentioned deep water horizon was also a massive oil spill. Yeah, that is uh, see uh, for uh, this particular uh, case study we have taken this. Uh, it is just happened in India. Deep water horizon is it is uh, maybe in the abroad. I believe. I think I don't think it has happened in India. It is, it is the only oil spill. Oil spill is different. Gas globally is somewhat more dangerous than the oil spill. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, how will the design engineers place the right design equipment at the right place? Uh, that is, uh, will they place in their own assumption or is there any set of protocols or uh, measurements? For design criteria, we have the standards. For each and every uh, this thing, we have the standards. Based on the standards, we have to, uh, I mean, uh, the material of selection to be done. For example, for sweet gas services, for sour gas services, for uh, CO2 requirement uh, like that, we dissolved gas like that, we have to select the material based on the requirement. Now, for example, some wells will be initially sweet and uh, over a period of time, it will it'll, it'll change over to sour gas. So if the, that um, thing is questionable, that we have to select for sour gas services also. That is mentioned in the standards. Oh, okay, sir. Um, uh, how many types of crude oil refining process are there? Crude oil refining process that is there in here we will be doing in the um, I mean uh, refineries that is uh, yes. we can see only one uh, that is atmospheric distillation column that is a very common uh, procedure we are using for processing or uh, uh, I mean now uh, 
processing of the crude oil. Atmosphere distillation column that they used to tell. And I'm not uh, fully aware of this uh, crude oil uh, processing. I'm, I belong to this uh, oil and gas production, uh, not the processing technology. Okay, sir. So, uh, an analysis pressure is slowly increasing. What would be the maximum pressure allowed? Yeah, that's what it is mentioned in the slide. I'll just put a slide again. <laughs> Analyst pressure. If it is 100 below 100 PSI, nothing to worry. If it is more than 100 PSI and less than maximum allowable working or operating pressure, that maximum allowable working and operating pressure will be designed by individual operators based on their well bore pressure. Okay, if the wells are, uh, I mean, under pressure is more than 100 psi, less than MAWOP, uh, then you have to bleed off the gas and the pressure maintains or it is not reaching the same value well within 24 hours. It is acceptable criteria. Acceptable criteria. If it is increasing immediately, then it has to be decided uh, based on case to case. We have to do the study and we have to take action. There are some places where we used to call at the, the passing rate is very high. This is high risk cranking well. We used to call this RR1, risk cranking well 1, risk cranking well 2 and all. So uh, based on this uh, leak rate, I will uh, just describe them. Accordingly, we will go for the repair work. If the repair is not possible or it is getting long time limits, we will temporarily abandon the well by providing a flood. So the maximum allowed limit is decided by the maximum, I mean, well bore pressure available in the uh, bottom. In the same way, based on the material what we have selected for uh, under, I mean, uh, casings. In general, in Adnog, that uh, Adnog wells, the 2500 PSI is the limit uh, for primary casing and 500 PSI, PSI is the limit for secondary casing. If it crosses above this limit, we will declare it as um, a risk ranking, high risk ranking well, and we will stop the production from the well. We will keep it idle until we do the plan. Okay, sir. So, uh, so we didn't. I believe there are. Uh, so, so we didn't receive any more questions, sir. So once again, thank you so much, sir, for uh, taking the session on your busy schedule, and uh, I also thank all the participants participants for attending this session. So if you would like to register for the assessment, kindly click on the link mentioned in the description in both uh, LinkedIn and YouTube. Uh, the assessments will be conducted on Monday. And the assessment materials will be shared in our uh, WhatsApp training group. Uh, you could uh, fetch the materials from there. So with this, uh, we can wind up the session, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. OK, thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, participation. And thank you very much for the team for giving me an opportunity to teach all these things. Thank you very much. Pleasure is out. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs>